Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel again. It's Joseph with Millis Construction and we're here for another Business Monday and I thought we might spend a little bit of time and talk about how I do estimating. How I make it fast, simple, easy, and accurate as best as I possibly know how. Now I've been at this for just around 10-11 uh, years or so so if you've been at it, a lot of you guys out there have been at it longer than me. If you have a better plan, awesome. Put it, put a comment down below and let us know what you do if you have a, a better idea for some of this than I do. But if you're enjoying these videos, especially business and tools and all these things we're talking about, don't forget to like and subscribe. A like helps more people see our videos and a subscription, we really appreciate it. But thank you guys for being here again. Now let's get right into it. Now, when I first started, everything is just a... It seemed to me that estimating was more of a guess than anything else, and I really wanted to change that. But as time went on, I was bidding hourly, and I'd look at a job, and I'd say, well, that job looks like 11 hours, and I'd multiply that by my hourly rate that I was charging at the time, which, you know, probably somewhere around 25 to 35 an hour, and say, well... I can do that job for, you know, $350, $400, and not even think about the fact that that 11-hour job may take three days to do because there are stop points during it, such as a drywall job, etc., where you have to give things a day to dry or something to get done like that. So, as it went on, guessing hours, since I worked at this all the time, it gets more and more second nature. You know how long it took you to do that project last time. There's, you know, it's fairly simple to know this time. If you know it takes you 30 minutes to change a ceiling fan, then you already know that. If they have seven ceiling fans to do, how long is that going to take you? Three and a half hours. It's fairly fast to come up with. But when you start putting things together like they have two sheets of drywall repairs somebody punched a hole over here and you're doing a front door now you can do all of this in probably a two-day period but it may take you four or five days to do it so i had this idea one day that there had to be a simpler way to come up with this rapidly and in doing so i ended up doing a day rate for all my work now instead of hourly it speeds up estimating it simplifies everything, and you hit your target for your weekly, monthly income more accurately than you do by maybe bidding a three, four hour job, and that being all you do that section of the day, you have two dead hours before lunch, and then you have another three, four hour job in the afternoon, and somehow you ended the day, you only had six to eight hours, you did not hit your full day. This is how you hit your full day. You bid only in half and full day rate. Now, as I mentioned in my other video, at this point, working as just me, possibly with one helper, I am a thousand per day. For everything that I have involved in this business, that's what I need to charge to make it very well. So, a half day is 500. A half day ends right around 12 o'clock is what I usually figure because I leave my house at 7 o'clock every morning and so from 7 to 12 is a five hour period but from 7 to 8 is material acquisition time for me or um, preparation on the job site if I have to run to the shop which is where we're at today and pick up a few extra tools if I have to load different things in my trailer, whatever. I have an hour for that in the morning, and I am paid for that because that is part of the job. Then we arrive on the job site, and we work 8 to 12, okay? At 12, that's lunch. If I've worked a half-day job, that job should be completed sometime between 8 and 12. Just because I bid a half-day, it may only still be a two-and-a-half, three-hour job, four-hour job, somewhere in there. So... I'm still done, and I've already made the full pay for 7 to noon, period. Then, I'll take an hour. I just have a belief myself that I work a lot better after I have a good lunch break. I like to take my helpers out to eat, whatever I'm doing that day. That's what we're going to do. So, we'll come back. We'll start back at 1. Time for this person runs from 1 to 5. 
So they have four hours as well. And then my last hour from five to six is putting everything away. If I had to haul a load of junk home, if I have a bunch of tools that we threw in at the end of the job site, if I need to clean truck, whatever I have going on, that's what that hour at the end of the day is for. So all in all, as a contractor, you're already aware that there's no way we work six, eight hour days. That is, that is fake news. We may only be on the job site six to eight hours, but that does not mean we're not working. If you're in Lowe's and you're not there to buy a grill for yourself, you are working. That's the truth of it. If you're buying a tool that you need for that job you're on today, if you're picking up a box of screws, all of that time counts. You cannot just let it go, okay? So doing this allows you to have that time set up that way. And if you have a second job in the afternoon, then your schedule switches a little bit. Instead of that one to five period, you have a one to two o'clock that is material acquisition for the afternoon job. And then you have from two to six at the afternoon job. Now, obviously, if getting materials only takes 15 minutes, you're already there. Maybe you don't even need to get material. You still, you have your five hours allotted to that job for whatever it takes. And that is to hit a hundred dollar an hour rate in order that helps make the video simpler as well if you're bidding at a fifty dollar per hour rate or an eighty you can just adjust that five times eighty would be four hundred in the morning four hundred in the afternoon you're working at an eight hundred dollar day rate whatever your day rate is that you have determined from figuring up all your expenses that is the rate that you have to make okay and once you come up with that when you get an estimate like remodeling a bathroom okay you're going to tear out the tub, tear the whole room out to the studs, then you're going to put everything back, okay? Everything except the licensed plumbing and licensed electrical work, unless you have those licenses. You also need to be sure that you book your days so that when licensed contractors have to come in, sometimes they don't show up the day you think they will. I mean, no duh, huh? But sometimes it is beyond frustrating. We're on one right now where we need engineers, as we've mentioned before on, a, on last week's video or tool video. And w there are three structural engineers here in this town. None of them are even interested in looking at the job, but the city requires one. So now we have to go find one in another town, probably at least an hour, two hours away in order to hopefully get one of them to come here and do this right up for us. So you have to think about things like that when you're quoting these deals and be sure you can fill in your schedule. That's what bidding little half day jobs here and there is for. If you want to still keep a service call rate of say minimum two hours, that's usually what you want to do. You'll have a um, hundred dollar fee for showing up and that'll include the first hour or you can do a two hundred dollar fee and that includes up to two hours. The thing with that that I've found is things get really weird with a service call because especially if you've told the person this includes up to two hours and I'm going to come and I'm going to hang your TV okay for two hundred dollars now where this goes wrong is when you come in and you have an easy TV install you go in and you install the TV and you're done okay well now since you're already here and since they're paying for the time, they're going to want you, you know, could you take a look at this? Could you maybe change these doorknobs? Maybe you need to run back to the store and pick up supplies to do this and that and beyond. It is generally a lot better to put out an actual job rate. So you're the only one that knows that you're bidding at a half and a full day rate, okay? Not the customer. They don't need to know I bid to be here from 7 to noon, okay? That's not what this is about. You need, you need to keep that to yourself. You said you could hang that TV and run the wiring in the wall and you'll have all that stuff hooked up and finished and that's going to be a half day rate. That's $500, okay? You don't say that's a half day rate though. You're doing that job for $500. Now, when you get that job done, if you get it done in two, three hours, whatever, now you have some time to actually spend a few minutes and work on your vehicle, whatever, and get prepared for the next job. You just don't want to put the customer in the driver's seat in that position because they will go ahead and drive the bus, trust me. And a lot of times, once you spill into that second hour and you're running down your time clock because they want every minute, now 
you may be taking on things that there's no possible way you're going to finish before their time is up and you've already booked somebody else. It's either you're going to be on time to them or you're not having a lunch. And a lot of times you won't end up getting a lunch break. It's just, it's a disaster in my experience. It's better to bid by the job and keep the hourly out of it. The customer never needs to know how you figured your time. Just that's the rate for that job and it's over okay for instance when i tile a uh, tub surround i figure we have to come in and we have full waterproofing that we do we have demo and waterproofing is one full day so that's one thousand day two we set all the tile that's one thousand day three we come in we grout caulk and out okay that's a half day and that's 500. So when I bid a shower surround, do you see how simple this becomes when I know I have day one, day two, and a half? It is 2,500. And you can write an estimate for a thing in no time whatsoever. So anything time somebody throws something at you like that, if you already know your minimum time is, is, is a half day, then you already know that rate, and you can just put a dollar sign right on it immediately. You don't have to think about it to the point where you're going, well, this is a smaller floor than that floor I did the other day that took me four and a half hours. I think I can do this one in three and a half hours. And so I need to be this much right down to the 50 cents. You don't have to do that. Just bid your rate. But that's just how I do it. And I am very curious about how the rest of you guys do these sort of things. I know there are people that really get exact with how they do their estimates. And yes, bidding this way might cost you a job here and there. But my close rate is really so high at this point that I, I, I went up again at the first of this year. And it hasn't phased anybody yet. Um, maybe one person that wanted a custom table built, it affected them a little maybe. But... I mean, if, if you're bidding what you're worth and you've figured what you need to make, then you know with confidence that this is what you have to charge in order to make it, take your vacations, all that we talked about in the other video on knowing your worth. So, this is my simple way of getting an estimate out quickly. When I, I don't, don't ever make the mistake of quoting a customer a price while you're still on the job site looking at the job, okay? Whether you do estimates for free or whether you charge is a whole other discussion. I personally, this far along, I only charge for design consultations if I have to come to the site and draw things up. I do charge for that. But if I can ballpark something over the phone or come up with an estimate like this, this is how I can offer a free estimate that is rapid and usually very close to on point. If we bid, say, five days, though, and we bring a job in in a day or two, somehow, miraculously, things go and everything lines up perfectly, then yes, the customer will be thrilled to see the deduction on their bill. But as a general rule, you can be very accurate with this, especially if you've been in the business very long whatsoever. So hopefully you guys got something good out of this. Hopefully it can help a little bit. I'll continue trying to do these on Mondays. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down here and let's talk a little bit about how you bid jobs. I'm very curious. I've come all the way from bidding my very minute detailed items. The only thing I will mention in closing is I, I do not mark up material ever. I charge exact prices for material. I know some people do mark up for it, but as far as I understand in this state, if I mark material up, technically I made money off of goods sold, and that's not labor if I do that. So I'd have to pay sales tax to the state on my markup a margin on every item, and that is a level of pain that I'm not going to deal with. So by building my 10 hour day with an hour of acquisition morning and afternoon, uh, it makes it where I am being compensated for my time picking up material. Obviously if picking up material takes more than an hour, it takes more than an hour and it's the customer's clock. That is not your problem. If you get to, if you get to your local yard and it takes them an hour to load you, you are sitting on that clock. That's what it is. Okay, that if you're not there to buy a grill, remember that. If you're not there to buy a grill or something to help you relax at home that's yours, you are working. That's the truth of it. Okay, so be sure you're on your business time when you do that. 
But thank you guys for being here again. I keep ending this video. I will actually do it now, but thanks a lot. Let me know how you estimate down below, and we'll catch y'all on the next one. See y'all later.